Let's dive on into it, Larry. So before we break down segments of the show, tell me how you felt about last night's show, what you liked, what you didn't like. Which one are we going first? Are we doing Lovecraft or, or, or Power? We'll do Power first. Oh, here we go. I got some notes on power. Damn. <laughs> let me let me go ahead and let me pull up my <laughs> iPad. I got some notes on, on power. Ladies and gentlemen, when oh. have you ever heard the living legend Larry say he take notes on power? <laughs> me and him have been doing this for about a year now. And my man done, this is year number two, and he done struck out the notes. I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> so I was thinking about what you said last week about um about the professor, I forgot her name. Professor, what's her name? Professor Carrie, Heidi McBody. Prof professor Carrie Megram, and I told y'all she was a sex yeah. addict. Yeah. So I was what I was. I had that in mind, and as I was watching, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, when they they did that scene where where Zeke went in to go see her, and then they did that scene where Reek went to go see her, and if you if if you when you watched it, the way that they did the two reactions were the exact opposite. The, the, Zeke was up there trying to get at her. She was giving him no time of day, trying to ignore all of his advances and just and just trying to bring that keep everything 100. And then when Reek went to go see her, she was doing the exact same thing Zeke was doing. She was all trying to be personal with him. She was being mm -hmm. all soft, doing what, what she would do from the female perspective, trying to get with him. Mm -hmm. And Reek was having none of it. He was trying to keep it professional and just trying to go about his business. So, you mm -hmm. know, it was really interesting the way the, the the they wrote those scenes and what they were planning on people doing with those. So, yeah. So why, why don't we just start right there with Professor Megram? So I'll, I'll summarize it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Tasha's still on the quest to get out of prison, but she's also trying to make connections while she's in prison. Keep that yeah, in the back of your mind. Yep. Um, Reed's still trying to come up with this money to get his mom out of jail, but at the same time, doing reconnaissance on the Tejada family hanging around, using dumbass Zeke to get into the family dinner, um, him showing that he had some street cred a little mm -hmm. more than what Kane had, which bothered me, to be honest with you. Um, then we get on down the line. Professor Megram is revealed that her husband, ex-husband rather, wrote a tell-all book about her. I got to dive into that. That's going to be a yeah. big point on this episode today, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Then we find out Frank really and truly was a rat. They took care of the rat. And when you have a rat infestation, what do you do to the rats? You put them really? in a trap and you get you off with their head. That's what they done to him. You know, then, I was, I, to be honest with you, I was surprised on that bit. You, because, why were you surprised? Well, because the dude that played that played Uncle Frank is like a known quantity. He's not like some random actor. He's sort of a known quantity. So I was really surprised that they offed him and got rid of him that quick. That was really a bit role for him. When I saw him come in, walk into the room, I thought, oh, he's going to be around for a minute because this is a dude that's been out there. But they brought him in and took him out like he was a nobody. Yep. Off with his head. Then we got Cooper Sachs versus Davis McClain. And that story, that part of the story is heating up too. Um, they yeah. brought in D.A. Sullivan, who I do like, by the way, and I think she's <laughs> going to be a recurring role in the show. But when McLean outsmarted Sachs, Sachs finally showed that he had some moxie and outsmarted mm. McLean by going and getting the one person who knows Sachs was at that shooting and Tasha was there went and got Sergeant Rodriguez, who is going to be having a recurring role on the show. Larry, they took us everywhere. And then the, then the, the icing on the cake of the whole thing. Yeah. Ghosts being buried. They didn't open the casket, which everybody, a lot of people are there's screaming. There's no body in there. A lot of people are screaming that that means there's no body in there. But there is a group of people that are saying, okay, Raina died. They didn't open her casket. Angela died. I cared about that. Angela died, and we cared about her. Her casket was closed. Mm. Um, Officer Milk Dud, he died. We never seen his body, but we know he died. Um, Terry Silver, well, they did show his body, so we can't even <laughs> count him. 
they, they eventually, they eventually as, as as, I mean, Ghost took that dude all the way out. There was no coming back for him. But, you know, the difference is with Raina, we saw Raina die. When we saw her get blasted and then and then they went out there, we actually saw her die in that moment. With Angela, we saw Angela die in that moment. She was she died in the arms of a ghost. So we saw that happen. Mm -hmm. But when we saw when we saw a ghost get shot, he got shot and he was bleeding and he was telling people to leave. We didn't really see him go out. No, we didn't really we didn't. see him die. No. And and here's another connection people are highlighting. Could it be a lot of people are wondering, why did you bring the uncle back in? Colonel Taylor from a different world, y'all. Shout out to my man. I love that guy. Why yeah. did you bring Uncle Gabe back into the situation? So conspiracy running around that. Could go well, be hot. obvious, don't you think? Uh, I mean, I would think he's going to be the one that I think he's going to be one that's ultimately going to end up guiding Tariq in his, in, in his, his world on being on the streets. I think he's going to guide him in uh, such a way that he can, that he can run the game but be smarter than his dad. Uncle and Gabe, you think Uncle Gabe I, is good? I think he's going to guide Tariq in, nope. the, in, the, in this hustle, but mm -hmm. it's going to be different because, see, if you looked at Tariq when Tariq was – uh, and, and I don't know if I'm jumping ahead on you, but when Tariq was at that frat party with his boy yep. and then that, and his, and that, and his friend's older, um, older brother punched that security guard in the face and they were going to arrest him, and mm -hmm. the dude rolled up and said, oh – I'm so and so Weston or Wester or whatever, and they were like the lady was like, uh, oh, sorry, you mean he was like, you mean like she said, yeah, like on the, on the whatever building and on the pool, and she was like, hold on, and he was apologizing, saying my brother's so and so. So I think at that point, Tariq realized, oh shit, these white dudes can punch cops and not get even get arrested by just dropping their last name. I can I can use this kid. I can do whatever I want with this kid because he's never going to get in trouble. And I can I can basically shield myself and my whole operation behind him. Yeah. And I, cause when, he, when he talked to his mom at the end and she said and, and and his uncle was saying the only two things you do, the only two ways you can end up from doing drugs is either in jail or dead. And he was saying, I think I found another way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the other way that he found was his boy. Well, um, I I agree on the party and how the white guy show white privilege at its finest. Thank you very much, Power. And how Tariq is going to show black privilege utilizing his dumb ass to do his bidding. I agree that that's going to happen with Reek. I agree Reek is going to do that. But on Uncle Gabe, I don't agree that Uncle Gabe going to teach him nothing with the street because Uncle Gabe really is under the impression that Ghost was doing legit businesses. That's what he's under the impression of. And I think he would you he's gonna so? be yeah. I think he's gonna do he's gonna be kind of the conscience that Reek goes to when he when all else breaks down in Reek's life and he needs to talk to someone like a pastor or someone of that nature. I think that's the role Uncle Gabe is gonna feel if Uncle Gabe isn't keeping ghosts somewhere safe. That's what I think is gonna happen with Uncle Gabe. I could see that because of what because of the way that Uncle Gabe had already come out about when he when he went and spoke to him, the way that he spoke to Tariq, he didn't speak to him as somebody who had an agenda. He spoke to him mm -hmm. as you're a son of this man, and this is something that you get to do just once. And if you don't do it right, you yep. will look back on this and you will regret it. So you need to choose how you're going to do this and do it right for you. And he was the only one that sort of came at at Tariq about doing this in what in a way that is right for him and at still same in the same time honors his father. You know, honor your father, but also do something that's right for you. So I think he was. I think where everybody else had their agenda, I think Uncle, you know, his uncle came at him legit style, which is what an uncle should do. You should come and, and speak to speak that truth and help him make the right decisions. You know. And I think it was good because he didn't tell Tariq what to do necessarily. He let Tariq decide for himself and figure it out for himself in that moment, which not only helps someone do the right thing, but it gives them that confidence. Because once you make that right decision, you feel like, oh, I just made a, a, I made a beautiful decision in a terrible moment, and I am okay. I can do this again. Mm -hmm. You know. And that's why I think so, Uncle Gabe is going to be more of a conscience relief valve for um, Tariq, if anything. But right. 
while we're on the funeral, they had so many of past people show up at this funeral. Cooper Sachs right. was there. Steve from the DNC was there. Tate made his grand entrance at the funeral. Hell, I thought they was going to bring John Mott. But there was one Hell, I noticeable, thought they were gonna... noticeable person that didn't show up, and I think Larry's in love with her, and that is my girl, Ramona Petonia. She did not Where show up at she? the funeral. Where yeah. was she? Why was why was Ramona not there? Now that that is just you got to have Ramona there because she was starting to enter a love interest with ghosts. Yeah. I don't understand why Ramona wasn't there, other than power just don't want to have her involved in the story at all. So Larry, I don't think you're gonna get no more Ramona love, my brother. I don't but, think so either. It's not like you, they haven't delivered enough new eye candy in this show, but you know, it would have been nice to actually uh, to actually have seen her. I was surprised that the the woman that was running for governor too wasn't there. They didn't show. I don't remember seeing her. They didn't show Ramona. Mm -hmm. I even thought maybe what's her name would have showed up. Angela's sister. I know she hates him, but I thought she might have shown up at the last minute to either to spit on his grave or at least pay her last respects or something. So yeah, that I, they didn't show Paz either, and I would think Paz would have just came just to verify that he's dead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just to come and say, okay, this MF is in the ground. He's not coming back. Goodbye. But she didn't show up either. So, yeah. and, and of course, Tommy wasn't there. If we would have had them, it would have been a full-fledged book one re uh, reunion, but none of that stuff happened. I'm but not sure thought, Tommy wasn't there. I bet you if they would have pulled those cameras back and let us see the wider scene, I bet you we would have seen Tommy sitting over there behind one of those... Uh, behind one of those trees lighting up a spliff like he used to do with Tasha in that in, in his cars. I bet you he was back, back behind one of those trees smoking or something, watching the funeral. Now, when they was debating who was going to give the eulogy, um, was, that, was, was there ever really any debate that Tariq was going to give the eulogy? I mean, they siphoned through as though Tasha was going to do it. And I'm still trying to figure out how they let Tasha get special clearance to come and, and say she's going to do a UG. I, I don't get how they done that. And then Tate decided, okay, I'll do it. And then finally Tariq stepped in. And I honestly could believe in the speech, Larry, believe it or not. I bought yeah. into the speech. I did buy into the speech. Um, right. He didn't throw ghosts under the bus. He didn't per se uplift them. But if you didn't throw them under the bus in that particular situation, you uplifted them. I mean, right. what, Tariq, what Tariq said was the honest truth. Right. It was very political. It was very political um, what he said in the sense that not political like like we think of politics, but it, or I shouldn't say political. It was very diplomatic what he said because he basically said what we were all thinking. His dad could be a crook, but he didn't know. He didn't know him. He said he's learning more about him now as after he's dead. And and. What he really did was simply tell the truth, but he told the truth in such a way that no one was hurt. Mm -hmm. You know. Now here, and, here's um, Trisha C, one of our favorites to this show, just mentioned something that I totally missed, and this is one of my favorite characters. Kay Egan didn't show up at Ghost Funeral. Now, can you right. imagine spaced out Kay Egan show, showing up to her black son Ghost Funeral? Man, that would have been a mess. That yeah, been I mess. wonder why she wasn't there. That's that's kind of that's kind of crazy that she wasn't there. Yeah, I, you know? I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking about with that, but I would have loved to seen it. And I hope they haven't written her out. Maybe she's going to be in Tommy's story. But I love that character, Kay Egan. I just love that character. Um, the chick at act. Yeah, she embodied a mom who knows her son is doing drugs, who knows her son is a dirt, her dad, the, the father's a dirt bag, and spaced out on drugs. I love that character. I hope they do bring her back. Um, yeah. But I think that they didn't want to go too deep with the funeral because they, they're working on so many other story plots. So here's one that we didn't see, we might, we didn't see coming. Monet, they call her Mo, Mary J. Blige's character is sleeping right. with Rico Suave from the police department and right. using the powers of her panty draws to manipulate him into helping her organization. Larry, right. how many episodes do you think he's going to survive? Because his ass is as good as dead. 
Yeah, he might. I think he'll probably get taken out. But he, he I think he's going to go a few episodes. I'm going to say, okay. I'm, I'm not sure how many are in this season, but I think he'll probably go close to the end of the season. I think eventually Kane will probably take him out. But mm -hmm. he's not going to just straight take him out right away because he is dealing with Monet. And he knows that if he just goes out on a limb and just takes him out without without telling Monet first, he might be the one next. So, you know, I think that – I think that – um I think they'll probably – he'll probably go – if there's 10 episodes, he'll get taken out in probably eight. Okay. You know? And so and, the, I mean, he could get taken out, or he could just get set up somehow because you don't really want to. You don't really want to put a hole in a cop. I think you. They might be better served setting him up somehow to take a fall, so that they don't have to kill him, and still get him out of the way. Now, but, how, how do you think Kane is going to react to his mother because she's been trying to keep this a secret from him, and he mm -hmm. clearly saw it yesterday. How do you right. think he's going to react when they have a big powwow about what you're doing sleeping with a cop? I mean, I'm sure she's going to try and play it to I'm getting information from them and I'm protecting this family. That's what people always do in those situations, right? I'm doing this for us. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for us. I'm protecting the family. I, I have to make sure that we have a buffer between us and the police. I need to make sure we have an access to information. I need to do all this so that so that you two or you three are protected as well. So I think it's, you know, I think it's it's one of those things. She's just going to play it off. She's gonna play it off as, as, Boy. as they're just get, as they're just getting protection. That's all it is. Boy, y'all never cease to amaze me in the comment section. My folks, Sean Odom says, them panty draws must not been too good. They must been dry as the damn Sahara Desert because he was a day late and a dollar short <laughs> with them them snitch papers. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Here's the deal on Rico Suave. Rico Suave is in love and Monet is just using him. As mm -hmm. simple as that. He is in love. He wants to be with this woman. And yeah. I don't understand how he thinks he's going to turn her from you don't go from a drug boss who's bringing in millions of dollars to a police officer who's making 40,000. You know, like it's, right. it, it don't work like that, brother. And the quicker you see, the quicker you will be. But I think that in all honesty, he really wants to try to put a ring on it. And he don't understand why she's still even dealing with the baby daddy, who's in the husband, rather, who's in jail. Right. You know, I mean, to be honest with you, I, the dude might stick around for the long haul because the, the two of them together really it has an, it, it's an interesting dynamic that they can play off with with her having this criminal organization and him being a cop and, and his, and her family not liking it, all of that just really makes for a very interesting mm -hmm. situation because, because he's not just some other person. He's not, he's not as easy to take off the board. You know, he's going to die. He's Larry. Not. He's going to die because did you see, she's got her another jump off. She sleep. She was sleeping with another dude in that episode. Did you see that? I thought the other dude was, uh, was her husband. I thought that was like doing a conjugal. It looked like they were in a, it looked like they were at the jail and like a conjugal. Okay. I mean, it, I think that's next episode. I think. You're talking about the preview, right? Yeah, yeah, the preview. But she had right. another cat she was messing around with. And, oh, I didn't see the other dude. And, you know, she just, she like a doorknob. Everybody get a turn on that well, sweet she's moment. Obviously that, I mean, obviously she figures that it's okay because, you know, you saw the way that uh, she spoke to her daughter when she said, hey, you saw, I think she I think she was actually talking about, I couldn't tell if she was talking about Frank or talking about Reek, but she said, hey, you saw the way he was looking at you, right? You need she, to use she, that. She was talking about Frank. Yeah. Well, she that's, was what I thought, that's what I thought too. But then it was like she told her, told her dudes to take Frank out. So I was like, anyway, she did. She told him, said, you see the way he's looking at you. You need to use that. Uh, to get you know to get whatever you need to get information or get close or whatever and i'm thinking to myself well damn you just gonna basically pimp your daughter out like that because basically what you're telling her is go in there and if you need to give up that give up that ass to get some info then do it and mm -hmm. i'm thinking there, there has to be a better way i mean yeah. you might have to do that you with the time frame you were coming up but there should be a better way at this point hey, amen all women know that the man's greatest weakness 
is super wet panty draws. That's a man's greatest weakness. We've seen we've seen civilizations fall. Mark Antony and Julius Caesar down yeah. there chasing that African queen, and the Roman yeah. Empire fell chasing them panty draws. Mm, 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 yeah, mm, mm. them draws are something else. They something else, bro. Speaking of draws, and we'll come back to some other stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about Carrie Megram's draws. <laughs> <laughs> She's a baddie, boy. <laughs> I knew when you know when, when, when dude came up behind her and put his hands on her hip. I was thinking to myself. She's a sex addict. She's not going to say no to him, even if she doesn't want, even if she doesn't want to be with him. She's probably just about to get her fix. So, you know. Now we we have got to talk about this, Larry. So, do you think that he left her because of her sex addiction? But even more, do you think that her sex addiction is with college boys? That's what I'm thinking. I mean, it could be. I think. I mean, I don't know. People who are sex addicts generally don't discriminate between, you know, men and boys. And I mean, they may not. They may not necessarily go with children, but they. But from my understanding, with sex addicts, they sort of just get with everybody. You know, but for the they, most part. But so. they have a predilection. I mean, I mean, right. you don't go from sleeping with women that's um, six foot nine to sleeping with little people if your predilection generally is six not. Foot six foot nine right generally not I, I i mean i don't know i think i don't think he left her i think the way from it sounded from that argument it sounded like he wrote that book about her and she left him yeah. in fact i think she I think he even said at one point when you left me how did you think it made me feel i was left in uh, alone in pain or something to that effect mm -hmm. so and, she, and mean, he, it, he wrote that book it sounded to me like he wrote the book and then she left him as a consequence of it Mm. And I would now, imagine that if, if someone wrote a book about you, if your if your wife wrote a book about you, you would feel probably very betrayed, especially if you had no idea this book was being written or going to come out, and all of a sudden you're blindsided by the book. I'm sure you would feel betrayed because here's someone that you've been sharing your life with, and then all of a sudden you find out that what they've been doing is taking notes. Well, so, I, I would feel betrayed, but I would not try to get her a job at my institution, you know, I'm yeah. trying to separate from her. No, so, I totally agree. And I don't fully understand why, why they did, why she did that. But because she wasn't done with them. And it you is what it is. I mean, it's weird. It is. It's weird. And you saw that after she had the conversation with him about having the vigil for Tariq, she went and talked to her sponsor, who I guess the sponsor for her sex addiction and the, and the sponsor jumped down her throat too. Like, what the hell are you doing? You are not over him. Why in the world you get him a job there? Now he's in your department. Right. Who does and, that, Larry? It was really interesting too, the way that the dude spoke to her about being all up in Tariq's business. She was, he was basically saying, look, you don't know what he needs. You don't know what he wants. And you're doing this not really for him. You're doing it for you. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and you need to knock it off. You know, mm -hmm. and she was, and it was interesting because they I love the way they're throwing things in there that that we feel as as black men every day. Because when he was saying something about when she was saying, well, Tariq, I'm worried about him. He hasn't processed his his feelings. And the dude was like, he's a black man in America. He doesn't have time to process his feelings. And I was thinking to myself, brother, for real, man, speak that truth. I mean, you just don't have time. It's like, I'm like, man, you get a dude. You get a dude that gets shot and killed in Chicago, and while you're trying to process your feelings about it, they beat up a dude in Georgia. And man, by the time you try you try to work about your feelings in Georgia, they kill somebody in, in, in Minnesota, in California, in Minnesota. You know? Yeah, yeah, I know. Man. It's just, it's. I mean, it's crazy. It's just. But you know so, what, I mean, Larry? You you know what's gonna happen, Larry? Old Professor Megram gonna help him process more than his feelings. Oh yeah, he's she's about to <laughs> she's about to process all kinds of feelings. I, I mean, uh, I, I show her Reek been getting some practice in because she looked like she can wear a somebody out. But here's the thing: is anybody ready to see Tariq in a love scene? I know I no. ain't. I I mean, but I feel like it's gonna happen. I feel like. You know, we've we've seen how the producers of power are. They like to show their their sex scenes 
So we but, might we might have to be endured. We might have to see it. And, and I'll tell you, and, I, and this is how this is how I would feel about this. If I have to see Tarek, Tariq in a sex scene, I just like for any of you who watch Game of Thrones. Oh boy, I watched Game of Thrones. I love Game of Thrones. But mm-hmm. when they had Arya Stark in a sex scene, I was not ready for it. Me neither. I was like, I Me it. neither. She's a grown woman, she's mm. about to go into the most fierce battle of her life, and she was trying to get it in because she didn't know she was coming out. But I was not ready to see that. No, I man. I was last, how many ever years grow up. I was yes. not ready to see her in that scene. I said you the know? same thing, and women was jumping down my throat, which I thought it would be the opposite. But I was like, I, I, I couldn't see my little sweetie pie Aria mm. having sex. It, it bothered me, no. man. I, was I bothered. did not need to see that. Ugh. I get it. I I totally understand why they did it for the story. It story wise, it was wholly appropriate. But mm. I still wasn't ready to see it. <laughs> yeah. Now and that's the same thing with Reek. I mean, we've seen Reek since before he did. I mean, he barely has a little mustache now, you know. We've seen him for what the last eight years or something. Yeah, man. And <laughs> and 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 the, and the thing is, he's gonna be in a love triangle with the professor, with Lauren, and with Diana Tahada. Mm. Well, he's gonna be in a quadrangle. He's gonna have don't forget about Effie. Oh, yeah, Effie. I forgot about her, mm-hmm. man. It's going to be a damn shootout for Tariq. My goodness. Hey, you know? we'll see where that goes. But now let's talk about another important piece. Now, this is a big shout out to my homie Moochella, who is Mooch. trying to put the fellas on to somebody special in power. Is they, big introduced, the they introduced the character last night that needed a morning after peel. To yes. show that she has got power in the prison. Mm. And Tasha was listening in because Tasha still is cunning, had brains behind Tommy and Ghost's empire. And she said, hmm, I need to be friends with this woman. So she goes and runs up on Reek and says, get her a morning after pill, which I don't know how the guards did not hear that shit. <laughs> I do not know how the guards didn't hear her tell Reek to get the morning after pill. But hey, we'll run with the imagination. Well, she whispered it in his ear when she ran up on him, and then she whispered it in his ear. So I felt like she screamed it, but hey, you she okay. stay on. And now she's got this woman a morning after peel. And the word on the street is she's gonna be the female version of Tommy in prison, helping out Tasha. How do you feel about this mysterious woman that we may get to do an interview on this very channel? Man, I don't know, but I'm I'm looking forward to see what goes down with it because you know if if Tasha and her get start running some sort of operation inside, <clears throat> that's gonna be something else. Especially, this could be a real ancestral you know an ancestralist type of situation if you have like Tariq's mom in there dealing with uh dealing with uh monet's husband who can obviously move stuff around to get stuff done in there and then this other woman if they have all these people on the outside working on the inside and they're all sort of related in some respect man this could be some serious mess tasha might not even want to come out she might be like i have a little drug empire jumping off in here i'm gonna stay in here for a minute make sure it's all set up before i get out well that brings another question while tasha is building an empire are you starting to get the feel they're going to drag it out with her being in prison the whole season? I am starting to get that feel. When they well, once once they stepped up, once um once uh Sachs came in there and they said no, we're filing federal charges against her. And mm-hmm. then when they were in the when they're in the judge's chamber and the judge said, "Well, it looks like we might have enough. There might be enough meat on the bones," I think is what she said. Mm-hmm. At that point, I was thinking she's likely going to be in there for the whole season, or maybe all the way to the very end. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't see them letting her out just yet, and they seem to be establishing relationships for her in prison. Mm-hmm. So it's likely she's going to be in there the whole season, and and I think part of it is is that because this is supposed to be, you know, he's since since uh, it's supposed to be the show is called Ghost and and. And Tariq is supposed to become the new ghost. You kind of need to get mommy out of the way. 
you can't have her on the outside telling him what to do and pulling the strings and and helping him make the moves. You kind of need her on the inside so he has to make his moves on his own and so he can become his own man and in a sense become his become ghost. Mm -hmm. And so I think Tasha story wise I would love to I would love to see her out but I think story wise it makes sense and probably helps the story that she stays in. Okay. So, yeah. Well, I can see that. Out, what are we gonna see? I mean, really, honestly, what are we gonna do if we see her if she's out? I mean, what are we gonna do? I mean, she's gonna, you know, what's she gonna do? You, I mean, you want me to write the story? I mean, she can get out and help Tariq build his crime empire, and they can keep Method Man as the lawyer. He can be the crooked lawyer working for Tariq as long as Tariq can keep bringing him that bag of money. He'll stick but he's right not there. Crooked, though. That's the thing, though. He's not crooked. That dude's straight up legit. He just is a really good defense lawyer. I, I ain't going to go all that way. Well, I guess it depends on the semantics of how you view a lawyer. Because they highlighted in the show last night that there have been known people that he's gotten off that he know committed the crime. So then it comes to a moralistic thing. But I guess if you are a defense attorney, it don't matter if you're if the person you're defending did it or not it's your job to get them off and it's right and that's the thing it doesn't like some some defense attorneys want to know if their clients are guilty right up front because it helps them prepare their defense you know and i think he's and, like and but it but you're right it does not matter if that person is guilty or not guilty or if you know they're guilty or not guilty or believe they are or not you have to give them the most vigorous defense that is possible you're obligated to do so under the constitution because that is what defense and i i know this personally because my mother is a defense attorney oh, so oh, you know oh, oh pop and his so, collar showing showing that his, his suburban card and shit. <laughs> oh, oh let me find out oh, oh former prosecutor but a defense attorney she left the she left the da's office said it was too corrupt mm-hmm mm-hmm 